Okay. Are uh, everyone has a drink? Does anybody need to pee? Yes. Do it. Oh, why'd you mute? He you couldn't resist. He couldn't you fucking resist. Coward. God damn it. You motherfucker. <laughs> I wonder if she said, hey, if they say you have to pee, let's have some hate sex real quickly. <laughs> and that's what he's going to do. Give me time to make um put my hair in the ponytails. Okay. Correct. Drink, let us drink, drink, drink. clink clank. Oh my god, clink, clink. you have um, there's liquid in the glass. Clink clank, clink, <laughs> clink, 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 clink. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Strange Happy Hour. I, of course, am one of your hosts, Brent the Jester Metcalf, along to my right, Handsome John. Nice try. And off to the left, the dispatcher, Mark Plover gotta cut them off early because we have a big show packed for you guys today we of course talk about the very nerdy video game news as well as the very cool tech news however there's some information from previous shows that we want to discuss at the top so from the top we're talking about how that canceled goldeneye game we talked about last week being really cool shit is now playable on pc people have access to it uh it is not hard to find just do a quick google search i don't think we can legally give that information out because i don't want to be in charge with like we're not benefiting that from it. For. That's true. Uh, except for our praise and prestige. Uh, uh, also, speaking of things we talked about last week, Wall Street bets one of the lead Redditors, uh, his name, Reddy Mark, is deep fucking value on Reddit, is being called in front of Congress on February 18th to discuss the situation. So that will be sometime next week. We will update you the week after because it's after our Tuesday recording time. Yep. Uh, and Finally, speaking of Stadia and its whole kerfuffle, uh, Terraria canceled on Stadia after co-creator locked out of Google accounts. Not just locked out himself, but multiple devs themselves were locked out. Stated that they will continue to work on the current products they have on Google, but going forward, that developer refuses to release any games on Google products from that point forward. So, not upset. I understand where he's coming from. A little upset because I you wasted iPhone my time. <laughs> or Android phones, but yeah. Uh, but of course, there's way more news out there to talk about. We have to discuss. We don't have time to discuss, actually. How Final Fantasy 14 is getting another expansion and a PS5 version coming in the fall of this year. Uh, we also don't have time to talk about how uh, EA has acquired Glue a Mobile for $2.1 billion. It's actually the highest video game like studio acquisition, I think, ever. I think wow. we need to go through our numbers, but I'm fairly certain that is the key. We also have time to discuss how... There's one more I wanted to hit, and I can't remember where it is, so I'm going to... Oh, Riot Game CEO is being sued for sexual harassment. That's right, the guy we talked about all the time in 2019 is being sued for sexual harassment. Finally, the people who have left the studio are bringing up legal charges. I'm sure we'll talk about that again at some point in time on the show, but until then, we only have time to discuss what we like to call on this very show each and every week as we gather together under our alcohol-soaked brain umbrellas in our quarantine bunkers alone but together as one what we like to call the, the important important. i feel like i took that one a little too long i'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to what other right. time dispatcher i think it's time for you to talk to me about this num the number seven and why it's so good and why everyone should be excited about it it's a lucky because number. seven's seven's like the lucky number you know er everyone loves the number seven lucky number seleven Beat you to uh, it. Heaven. Uh oh. I haven't watched that movie in a while. I watched that movie. <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't know if seven's always the luckiest number or, you know, always the most appropriate number, even, you know. Uh, like, uh, uh, would you uh, would you want seven monitors on a laptop? Yeah. But either of you ever want seven monitors on a laptop? You know? I mean, if I'm a stock uh, would, trader and I have a bunch of emails and I want to watch porn whenever I feel would, like it and I don't have to switch would, screen. <laughs> that's a lot of porn. Oh my gosh. There's a um, lot of porn going on there. Um, I mean, they are 4K displays, so <laughs> why not? <laughs> so um, hope you just stretch it across all seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! This is a very gosh. interesting screensaver. <laughs> it's actually well, a movie. It makes um, noises. So the note of seven monitors on a laptop. 
Uh, there is a, a prototype that has come out from a company called Evanscape, or I'm sorry, Expanscape. Wow. I read that one wrong. Um, called the Aurora 7. The prototype laptop using f- uh, two, four, I'm sorry, four 4K displays and three full HD or 1080p displays. And it is the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever seen. I think it's amazing. You have to it's, you have to have two power supplies for it. One for the laptop itself and the main monitor. The second one just to drive the other displays. That's amazing because it needs so much power. Um, fun fact, if you look at the main image on the article linked uh, in the document description below, uh, you'll only initially see the first six monitors right off the rip. Uh, if you look at the second one, uh, the second image further down in the article, you realize the seventh one is actually built into the base of the laptop next to the touchpad. That's just someone being an asshole. Yeah, They're like, I agree. You know what? Why? You know what? We have competition that have made the six monitors on a laptop. I'm going to make seven. You're but just adding a why? bunch of heat inside your laptop at this point in time. Yeah, pretty much. Like, like it, so, but I mean, you see how thick the thing is. It's like two inches thick at the base of it. Not it's including not what C's. the back of it looks That's like. That's four C's. What? What? Thick with two C's. Oh, oh. <laughs> Don't worry about it. there we go. There we go. Yeah, there okay. it's a funny joke. Yep. See? Yeah, got it. Yep. Got it. Just took a second. OK, now I've never you oh heard you God. ever use the, the phrase thick with two C's. No, I actually never use it more often than you would think. <laughs> <laughs> more than you oh, should is God. probably the correct thing to say. <laughs> that, <that's laughs> the correct Jesus. Um, the only well, thing I um, can totally mm. see that screen being useful for is if you're doing some kind of dictation. And you're trying to you're typing on something while you're trying to look at you don't actually have to change up too much. You don't have this going on. So like I could justify four monitors to me mm-hmm. like as a developer, I could justify four monitors or three monitors on a laptop, you know, like the two vertical one, the two because the two that fold on the outside are you can't portrait. be a hacker without seven monitors, dude. I mean, oh my did gosh. you watch the movie Swordfish? Yeah, he had obviously like 12 monitors. <laughs> It's required I mean, to make a worm, not not a what do you call it? No, it's not a worm. It's a hydra. A hydra. He's building hydra. <laughs> that movie's so dumb. I love it. I love that movie. I do too. It's so dumb. Gosh. Anyway, um, like I could see, I don't know, I could see three monitors or four monitors as a developer, but why do you need seven? Like, like at what point? And and better yet, okay. So here here's the here's the big. I know we're putting this. a development as like this baseline of this is what you need like what you would possibly need is there any job that would be facilitating seven monitors to make this feel good like the financial only, like financial services yeah. is the only thing i can think of like i've stock been trading. through financial services they have but, three monitors two of them are skinny long monitors on each side of this big old monitor that's what i've seen them use currently when i, I go see, through I don't trading know. floors like, I, like I, that's what I don't get. Uh, like, I, I don't know who would use this. I mean, unless like there's some cost justification that comes out of this. Now, granted, this is just a prototype, so there is no like release price or anything like that on this. Um, uh, what could there be? Let's talk about like the dis- point, like sure. what where they decided to display this. There's this weird cabinet in the back that has like a couple of glasses and some old ass like teaware from the 1400s, and I it do. looks like a spoon collection <laughs> on the side. Why was that your choice of let's display this here? And even then, this is just your break room. Why is that in your break room? Why well, is that a thing? <laughs> There's other aspects behind this, right? Because not every monitor is is equal. It's very obvious from that, right? Mm-hmm. So you've got the laptop monitor, which I'll I'll put it. I don't know if they actually give specs, but I would argue it's like a fifteen to seventeen inch typical it's laptop a, monitor, uh, right? The so the four large ones are seventeen point three inch monitor. There you go, seventeen inches, right? It's similar to what I have on my laptop. One folds for the people who are listening to this. One folds down from the top. So if you were to like open your laptop, and then imagine there's like another one that can extend from the back of the screen and then kind of tilt down. So you're you're making almost like a C like shape two two that. vertical and then top one like bends down towards you. Yeah. Then you off to the side, you have two that come out like butterfly wings. So they're 17 inch, but they're standing uh, vertically oh. rather than horizontally. Yep. So they're Portrait. tall. And then above those are two small monitors that pop out. And those two small monitors are the ones where I'm like, OK, what the f- 
fuck is that for? Those like, are just I, for I, chats. You got one for Discord it, well, and you've yeah, got one for work. And then you put Slack side up there one, and you I got, could put email on the other. Yeah. And or no, no, no. Your email <laughs> would probably go in one of the side screens. A, a development is probably going on between the two screens up and bottom where the left one's got, you know, I don't know the shit that you use to distract yourself <laughs> while you work. Your See, YouTube, I love your Netflix. I love to multitask, and I have a widescreen monitor on my laptop, so I have I have at least three monitors available at any time when mm-hmm. I want to work. That's how I comfortably work. If I have more than that, oh my god! But like seven mon, what the fuck am I going to do with seven of these things? Dude, like, so it's it's, it's, it's the, the little like ones you, that Brett, I don't that understand. Have Fifty tabs open. And now you'll have five less tabs. No, because I'll just leave them on the same browser. <laughs> <laughs> it uses the same amount of memory. Why would I change? Oh, God, that's uh, I cringe at that idea. But yeah, it, Dylan Looking does at that too. Yeah, your 3D does that as well. Like, oh, uh, I'm not him. I am not him. Like, Dude, he is you, an it abomination. Is it's the he f- has, same thing. So he no, has so no. many tabs. He has so many tabs <laughs> that you can't read them. You can barely Correct. see the icons. On an ultra wide, and you still have to scroll through them, right? Like, yeah, he like he has he ha- a- he has to use a plugin or a Chrome yeah. extension to kill the tabs and store it away because it costs too much for him to actually have the tabs actively running all the time. Correct. Why? Yeah, thank you. Because he's a psychopath. We all know this about I mean, him. It's one I of the reasons why we like him. I to use your computer. It was slowing <laughs> down, too, so I wouldn't be going too far into the psychopath realm. I mean, where do you uh, draw the com- line at, 20? About 10. What do I have right now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, yeah, 20. <laughs> <laughs> 20 sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Got him. Uh, I got a lot yeah. of stuff going on, okay? <laughs> so... So, like, talking about the the ridiculousness of this, they actually had like this. So, this is actually a functional prototype that they got. You know, the picture is obviously very real and usable. I can't. Uh, st- I'm just extent. looking at the cabinet and the flowers. Um, so, they actually like gave proper specs on it based on the the prototype. Uh, it weighs 12 kilograms or 26 and a half pounds. 26 <laughs> Hold on, one second. One second. and a half pounds. It does have. I mean. It legit does have a good solid handle in the back. Just I'm assuming. for reference, this is 20 pounds right here. It weighs this more than that. This dumbbell is 20 pounds. Yeah. It weighs one and a quarter times that. Yes. Jesus. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so you, most of that weight obviously is the screens. And, and you'd think, you know, OK, well, you're probably spending a couple thousand dollars, maybe ten thousand dollars on something like this, you know, for, for really good productivity. Um the only thing I don't like is that they put some older gen tech in it. Like they mm-hmm. put a Core i9 9900K, not a 10900K, or even forward looking to an 11 series or an AMD processor. That Because you would think this is probably going to be a workstation. But it comes with 64 gigs of RAM. That's not bad. But it comes with a GeForce GTX 1060. Okay, the 20 series has come out since then. And the mm-hmm. 30 series has now come out since then. Mark. There I are don't seven monitors on there. They have to lower the this. cost somehow. At, at what point are you trying to focus on lowering the cost? Well, with something this, this is, obscene. This is not a gaming laptop, okay? Oh god. Okay, so then the the last like ridiculous stat here. Um, so there's two batteries that you have to that you you have to carry with you to power this whole thing, not on a you plug. That, so much. The first one is 82 watt hours, which is pretty decently sized and is about the the max limit of what you can carry for example on an airplane um a hundred or there's a secondary battery to just to power the screens that is 148 watt hours fun fact can't carry this uh, this uh this laptop on a plane <laughs> and immediately goes right out the window unless you want to use it as stationary and leave the battery at uh, the big battery at home yeah you can't power all the monitors on this thing like like it, so like this this makes it kind of interesting for me to look at it of um oh yeah it doesn't list the pricing but uh, the pricing will reflect the cost and development involved in the fact that you know we are in the very early stages of our prototypes development that is a quote from uh expanse gate um but i i i'll always circle back to the question of why um 
I think they need to do something better from the power perspective, because if you're going to require me to plug in two giant power supplies for this, I may as well just get a desktop. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I agree entirely. I, I think <laughs> this is one of those situations where it feels like the company wanted some free PR and they're like, you know what? We'll just over engineer this thing. We we may sell we may sell a few because it's a prototype or whatever, but ultimately we want to try and push our other products. And that's yeah. their goal is to try and get enough people to look at them and go, well, this is too much. But what else do they have? Yeah. Well, this makes the headline. So, oh, hey, they've yeah. got a three monitor version. OK. All right. Well, let me look at that, you know. Well, especially if you already are literally doing this in development anyways, right? Like, right. again, hey, we built a seven monitor version. It just wasn't con uh, uh, workable, right? But we've limited it now to three. You can carry it on a plane. It weighs less. It does this, this, and this. Like, they could easily rectify this ideology and come up with something that could sell. Yeah. Oh, I, f I forgot to mention, actually, with those two batteries, you get 140 minutes of, of runtime. I saw the I saw the 140 minute runtime and I get laughed. I was like, like, that's that's <laughs> their on. that's their baseline number of like, we're just turning it on to the desktop and not doing anything with it. And it runs for 140 minutes and that's it. That's amazing. God, you couldn't even watch that's... the entirety of Tenet on that. Nope. Or Inception. Nope. <laughs> they're they're two and a half hour films. Why? I mean, <laughs> why would you want to? You're wasting six monitors at that point, or you just no. got it. You've just got it on all seven monitors at the same time. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna get on that lower monitor. Wow. I don't know how you're gonna go deeper on that lower monitor because you're either gonna have to stretch it so it's like only like the right hand corner of the image is down there, but you cut off the bottom third. <laughs> Just to fit that right hand corner. I, I, don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know. Or it's, or you just or you just have seven versions of the movie all playing at the same time. Like <laughs> I do like that idea. One of its standard, Tenet, by the way. Because then no matter where you look, it's you know, you got the same content. Then it's not bad. That's true. I, th I thought it was an interesting concept movie. Yeah. I do um, believe that it, it it buckles under its own weight, but it's not bad. I agree. Yeah. Um I'm willing to watch it again. The last interesting part of this article, of course, is the closing of it, where they mention uh, where they might where the Aurora Seven might have been inspired from. I don't know if you guys watched the video. Of the, I did not. I did because the SpongeBob was on the front of it, and I was like, "Is this even related, <laughs> or is this a weird ad?" No, it's it's related. Jesus, that's so dumb. It's so dumb. No, I refuse to acknowledge <laughs> that. I don't care if you are an audio listener, you can click the link at your own despair. Oh, that's don't okay. They, they, they just kind of listen to it. So, <laughs> oh, my God, that's funny. That's real funny. No, uh, ultimately, I would be curious to see what they do with this, because, again, like as a concept, we've already talked about how this fails considerably, well, right? No, I, I, I think the I think the easy thing is drop. <laughs> I think the easy I think thing is 25 pounds is uh, it makes you feel like it's worth it. You know, like fuck with me and I'll hit you with my fucking computer and I'm like 25 pounds worth of death to your face. I'm actually yeah. really excited. And then, the technology has decided that they're not going to go smaller. They're just going to go bigger. It's like the PS5. We're not going to fit in your entertainment center. Fuck you. <laughs> We're not going to fit in your backpack. <laughs> Fuck you. You remember those really small phones? We're getting them a little bit bigger. Yep. They're now actually, I just, actually, I just saw an article uh, that was, uh, oh, for small phone lovers, uh, you know, like that's bad news or whatever. Apparently the iPhone 12, whatever, uh -huh. the, the mini, the, the mini version um, didn't sell very well. Yep. They're probably going to yep. take it out of circulation. Yep, that is correct. Yes. Phones are only going to get bigger. The new Maxes are just going to be tablets that we fix to our ears you know again that's why they want f the foldable design to work because they want people want that for specific situations but need a smaller phone in most circumstances they're just going to have to perfect that and it will sell buku bucks I agree with this so so what i'm hearing is this laptop only has very very few use cases i'd buy it per yes I would buy it just to have it. Yes. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm just not gonna to use it. it. It's right just gonna here. be a showpiece that sits back there in the background of the podcast constantly. <laughs> you know what? I Show it to I an interview this. with I, this I, laptop. I, I, okay. I want you to go into an interview and just open it up to these screens, and they're gonna be like, you know what? This guy knows what he's doing. He's good. You know what? <laughs> only, what the only fuck is that? Also, and be like, oh, this is stuff no one's ever seen before. I'm creating a it, whole different language. It doesn't have to be functional, but I also want you to pull out like. <laughs> 
uh, 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 what are they like the echoes or whatever the Google homes are. And I just want you to have it next to it and plug it in and then just go, okay, start laptop and like have something so that you can start it another way. But it just appears like Google's turning it on and they're just like, holy shit, this guy is prepared. Yeah. We should hire him today. <laughs> <laughs> oh so God. Dumb. I I feel like if you're doing this, though, you just have to have some video that plays across all the screens constantly of just like command yes. screens opening up and, you know, moving all about and something that pops up like the Pentagon, you know, and like getting access. To, and then as there soon as that go. as soon as that disappears, you you just have to constantly like every five seconds say I'm in. You know I'm what? In. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> I do like the concept, though, of using this as a hardware device for an interesting game where as your character moves across the screen, the camera doesn't move. You just move to another screen. You won't know which screen it is, so you have to pay attention to all seven screens. See? No. That could no. be interesting and fun. I, no. Yeah, you guys sure hate could. fun. You guys hate fun. Okay. <laughs> you guys Please let us know fun. what your thoughts are on the Aurora 7 laptop. Are you excited is there a for a disk seven drive? <laughs> I'd be excited for an Aurora for 4, drive? maybe. I, I don't know. Is there a disk <laughs> drive? Is there a dick drive? You disc. pervert. Disc. You I said pervert. Disc. You're the pervert. Please let us know in the comment section <laughs> floating directly in front of John's disc drive. <laughs> now moving on to our next topic of the show. John, talk to us about something with gears drive. and entertainment, maybe borders and lands. I don't know. Borders and lands. Uh, Embracer acquires Gearbox for $1.3 billion. Here we go with these acquisitions again. Ah. Billions ah. of dollars, baby. Damn. And this is actually kind of a big deal because though, yeah, they did buy Gearbox. They're not getting Borderlands in this. See, when I initially heard this, I was like, oh, wow, $1.3 billion. They bought some pretty decent IP. Nope, that IP did not transfer with them. 2K will still be publishing those. And from what I understand uh, in the IGN article, they'll still be working with Gearbox to make those games, which makes sense. I wouldn't want to burn a bridge. At least you get, uh, you know, the publishing pie, I guess. I, I'm not entirely sure the, how that would they're, work. They're literally work with them to finish off all the DLC and everything else with oh, that's three it? and then Bo Borderlands 4. Well, this is my thought. Like, they're not going to keep them on there because they're owned by Embracer Group, which is THQ Nordic. Like, P Embracer Group also wants to get their chunk of the pie by publishing their own thing. So THQ will Why would finish Gearbox their sell at all? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. They were, doing, they were doing. They were doing really, you know, really well. It, like, there was no reason for it. It, it might have <laughs> something to do with a one point three B. That like that might that yeah. might be that, that might have something to yes do. Yes and it. no. I mean, they they Obviously, were making mad amounts of money with Borderlands Three. I mean, it's been as far as I know fairly successful. I don't know yeah. how the DLC has been going to keep people entertained. To be honest, but fairly I have seen a lot less going on on Twitter, which usually means a slowdown. I mean, I would say after screwing their employees out of bonuses, they needed another cash flow. Yeah, I mean, why not? You just kept all that money. Why wouldn't you yeah. want more? I mean, maybe that's yeah. why they did it, because they're like, you're leaving anyway, so fuck you. <laughs> 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 you don't know it yet, but um, you're about to be shit on by another company here real soon. I mean, I don't know if shit on, because THQ Nordic, a.k.a. Embracer Group, has been pretty positive recently including with their releases like they're releasing good content and people are happy to be a part of them well i wasn't happy with genesis so let's put that up there yeah but i don't blame and i don't blame embracer group like we literally no, play they're Manator, just a holdings dark siders three like yeah like i mean they own uh deep silver uh yep. they own saber interactive uh what was the other one? Oh, there's another big one uh bio where is that right no, 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 that's EA. The company that makes Biomutant, though. Biomutant, that was the game. Uh, that was the one that we're all like sitting there ready for that is coming out in May of uh, this year. Hopefully still. We'll find out. Experiments um, 101. Yeah, they're doing. the developer. Yeah. Um, but they own Gunfire Games, Airship Syndicate, Deep Silver, Purple Lamp Studios. A lot of these smaller studios, but that's because they acquired a ridiculous amount of them, including now Gearbox. In May of last year, they had 118 games in development, and 69 of them were not even announced yet. And they're still saying they still have more to announce even now. Yeah. Like this company is just buying things up left and right. And I don't know if they're just trying to become like this. I don't know if they're like, I'm trying to figure out what their position is. Is it just constantly putting out games and constantly having incoming revenue that at some point it really doesn't matter 
about loss because you have revenue coming in from another stream that it always ends up building on itself. Well, like, I'm not entirely sure what their angle well, is with this. We, we've already seen that business model work. Epic. Epic has yeah. literally done yeah. this exact business model of they have one solid platform that makes them a ton of money and then they can just go around and start buying more titles to sort of build an empire out of it. Um, See, I, I agree with you, but what's really interesting here from a historical standpoint is like THQ Nordic was technically THQ beforehand mm -hmm. and it went defunct. Yeah. Yeah. And so this company, the Embracer Group, came in and bought THQ and all of its properties that it had available at the time. Now, THQ, because it went defunct, auctioned off a lot of its stuff. And a lot of these independent developers were able to kind of buy back their own properties. So Embracer Group has since then gone back and bought everything back. Like THQ did help, if I remember, publish the uh, Destroy All Humans. They own that now. Mm -hmm. Darksiders, they own that now. Like they've mm -hmm. gone and picked it back all these things and incorporated others. So while I understand your analogy, I don't think it's as clear cut here because they don't no. have a hit. No, they're definitely their own animal. I mean, the analogy was strictly just trying to get close in thought process to what you were like going for. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not an exact match for match for sure. No, because nothing no, around I mean, every, so far every, is everything's like it. different. But I, my my major point <laughs> is like they don't have one game that's funding them, right? Like no. you're talking about Epic with Fortnite. Fortnite. Yep. Right. Like they they literally don't have one thing driving them. This is the and opposite in the same stance where they have a bunch exactly. of little stuff that is constantly bringing them just, almost the same I mean, amount of money just in yeah. really really small quantities all over the place. Like they're um, the publisher that released this Manator game that John and I recently played. Yeah, it's a fun game. And love God, I love that game so dumb. He loved it so much uh, more than I did, <laughs> but I did enjoy it. Uh <laughs> But to answer your question, I would say that they're buying out the double A developers because there used yeah. to be a space for that. But because Embracer has enough money influx, like games releasing, doesn't they're matter. They're not just they buy. buying like developers and IP, they're also buying publishers. Like they have multiple publishers yeah. now. So they're trying to get on the level of 2K and all these other places. And eventually they will. Maybe Biomutant comes in to be a you know a really big game. Maybe their goal is to buy Gearbox and push triple A title stuff. I get it. You got Gearbox as a name. It's yeah. really well known. And I don't know what ideas they have maybe they want maybe they see a lot of potential in darksiders and they want to push a darksiders game towards their way see what they can do with it i don't know i mean I feel like you're 2020 really is a <laughs> weird 2020 was such a freaking crazy year 2021 is also amping up to also be just as crazy of a year just in business we've been seeing a lot of people making really big moves yeah. so i i'm yeah that's a stretch don't get me wrong i wouldn't put any pizza bets on it or anything but um yeah, I mean, <laughs> buying Gearbox in general was a huge deal. Like, I didn't think I 2K would let them go with their lineage of Borderlands. Do they still plan on making Borderlands? If they do, who's going to be the developer on it? Well, so the, I mean, the thing is that Gearbox has been independent. 2K didn't own them. Yeah. 2K mm -hmm. just did the publishing deal. I mean, and like they, they, worked, could, they worked a lot with 2K on this. And yeah, so but they're the not going to work with them to make further Borderlands. I think they're okay with that because of what Mark said, the 1.3 B <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, Gearbox well, so, so here's, okay with that, but I mean, 2k wants to make more borderlands. Who are they going to well, choose to do it? So here, here's the, here's the interesting stat that I found too. Um, cause I was, I was trying to look up to see how much, you stats. know, like borderlands three would have actually netted in revenue. Uh, and instead I found out the entire borderlands franchise, um, has made apparently just over a billion dollars. So, so that 1.3 B just bought Gearbox for uh, well, crazy. but I mean, so so the effective value you buy a company for, but it like generally sits around what you expect their value to be um, around maybe the revenue or the income that they've generated from some of the services they provided, and, and usually it's exponentially higher whenever you're looking to purchase a company like that because you've got to think about the potential earnings over the the life of the company, um, mm -hmm. you know. But it, you've got to identify a certain time frame that that would be valid in, you know, and, and $1.3 billion, I don't think is a bad number for Gearbox in, in, in any respect there. If the entire Borderlands franchise, which has been around for more than a decade now, um, yeah. you know, that, you know, like that's a really an unfair price for them 
you know, and and maybe if if 2K's come out, like did 2K out, uh, come out and say that they weren't going to be making any more with Gearbox before or after the acquisition? No, they said they will continue to work with them. Oh, despite yeah, uh, the acquisition. Oh, I was then, saying that my my personal feeling is that they'll probably finish up whatever DLC is with Borderlands Three, oh, and then oh, they'll be oh. they'll end that relationship. Oh, and oh, not oh, to mention, I think the numbers that you're seeing for sales when it comes to Borderlands is just strictly off sales of the game. I don't think you're getting any DLC numbers. No, no, no. It says the total Borderlands franchise. Yeah. Like, how did they um, come up with that everything. number? Where did they get that? Uh, sales numbers. So Borderlands Three only sold eight uh, eight million copies, which would only net them about four hundred and eighty million dollars. And that, and again, that's revenue. That's not income. Um, yeah, and I agree with that. But at the same time, like there's also multiple DLCs in line with that. I can't imagine that they wouldn't include the DLCs in that. E- like, even if they, they would want right? to, they would want to push that number to be the highest that they could possibly push it to be. So it, it, it's the best statistic we have right now. We can put it to the lowest common denominator. It does not include DLCs. It's just strictly game sales for the yeah. entirety of the franchise. There's another point to put out here is that one of those games, because there's four games total in the Borderlands franchise, was not created by Gearbox. It was the least liked, but it did sell really well because it came after Borderlands mm-hmm. Two. So that's also included in the sales. Yeah. So you kind of yeah. have a net net you know equal we'll put i mean gearbox DLC started DLC. off with expansions to valve's half-life you know porting half-life to yep. console platforms which i think i mean that's a big deal i mean dealing it with anything with valve on that scale it's, you gotta have some talent so yeah. i think they'll do some crazy stuff i'm just curious to what they're actually going to do with them what that might so, be most of what game developers at least the ones that speak about why they're being purchased like insomniac games with sony right like insomniac said the reason why they picked sony is because they wanted to have continued revenue without the concern of having to make a game they didn't want to make they didn't want to have to just put out something to make cash but they wanted to have control of what they're doing and they saw that in sony i imagine that's something similar here with gearbox except that once again like we talked about before the show, Gearbox also does their own publishing. They publish Risk of Rain 2. They've published a couple of other smaller games that are coming out now. They're trying to em- embrace them. The <laughs> side. <laughs> so they're trying to expand themselves. And so I imagine 2K was either not necessarily upset about it, but they're like, you know, there's only so much we'll do with you going back and forth. And this is guaranteed revenue for them. Once again, they're now owned by a company. They're not independent any longer. And if Embracer Group has said, listen, this is what we do. Look, we publish Maneater. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> like You can make whatever yeah. game you want and it won't yep. matter. You can do whatever you want. We're just going to fund the bills as long as you're not costing us money. Yep. Then yeah, why would they not? Well, and I mean, if they're, they're net positive most of the time, one, it makes sense for them to own them as a company in the first place and let them just be business as usual like uh, there's really no downside for it or for embracer group there who, who just got bought up that was supposed to you know be hanging out and doing their own thing and then the company stepped in and started messing with i think it was blizzard bethesda there's, there's a lot well i was gonna say no, bethesda's fine right now arguably but blizzard was bought by activision that was it blizzard activision was screwing with Ugh. blizzard that's what it was yeah, yeah. That, yeah well but- yeah like Blizzard merged so hard with Activision or, or, or rather other way around Activision merged all their stuff into Blizzard's platform. Uh, that Correct. It's been a time since that active uh, that happened. Now I'm not saying you're, you're wrong. I agree with you. That's the fear for everyone, right? Like even in Somniac games, I love Sony. John, you love Sony. We play PlayStation a lot, but they do like, some mean things sometimes, <laughs> but they do right. And they've closed studios before that they've just purchased. And that's, they're not closing in something. There's no way they would do that. I mean, like, close it something, there will be I've, I would eat my socks if they did that. There's I uh, mark my words in the next five years. If they sell insomnia, I'd be, or if they closed insomnia, I won't say sell. But um, so, uh, it, it, I'm just really curious what what their point is. I, I that's the only thing I could assume is what I really want to talk about. Where the, where is Embracer Group going? They have the Dark Siders franchise. They put out the remasters. They are trying to make some money back on some of their like he- heavier franchises. I mean, they remastered uh, one, two, and then they made three and destroy all humans. Did two get remastered all, yeah. or did it not release on two remastered? Darksiders 2. I was I yeah. thought that released on PS4. No. 
you're right. The 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 definitive edition. So dumb. So dumb. <laughs> I know. I <laughs> so I mean, you asked the question earlier, and I was. It uh, should be right up your alley, Brett. You love all those stupid freaking puns. I do love stupid games. <laughs> Uh, I was trying to answer your question. I derailed myself. Uh, I think they're taking up the double A space in a very earnest manner because there's no one else there. So why would you not? Right. Like Ubisoft came out in their earnings call today and literally said, hey, we're not going to rely on double A development anymore. It's too expensive. We're going to move to some smaller titles. We're going to move to free to play because that that's where the money is. So it's Activision. Bullsh- Activision has already done that. We've seen that right now. Like they literally spent two point one billion dollars on a mobile developer like they're trying to find cash wherever the flow is i think embracer group is looking at the the industry and going well we don't want to do that because that's not what we believe in but we still want to make money and there's all these devs who make games that sell let's say less than a million copies but they cost considerably less than anything that sells a million or more so why don't we just scoop them all up We'll own this entire economy, and then every game that gets released, whether it's a dud or not, we can help balance the tide with all of them. Yeah. And I think it's a smart move. Yep. I mean, because when you're it, playing in numbers, yeah, that's going to help you out a lot. Well, and your competition is what? Indie developers? Which, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of great indie developers. I'm not knocking them at all. But, yeah. like, you're not competing with Assassin's Creed with Manny. <laughs> Like you're, no. you're developing your own niche that becomes the January PS plus title that some crazy person with a podcast convinces his friends to play. Like that's how this works. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, it's a numbers game ultimately, but I think it's a smart move because one, it keeps the double A development. I and mean, we've talked before about how double A needs to stay in game development because without it, you've got this and this when it comes to money. And oftentimes the quality comes somewhere in the middle, literally somewhere in the middle, sometimes from a cost perspective, but also from a fact that like there's plenty of this that costs nothing but people's blood, sweat and tears and suffering on the individuals that comes up out of nowhere, like Fez, Shovel Knight, you know, mm-hmm. among all us, all these among us, like all of these little indie titles. Thank you. I don't play a whole lot of multiplayer games. Uh <laughs> And then there's this that just fails considerably. Assassin's Creed Unity, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which was a great game, but failed to meet its sales standards. Like they they put millions of dollars into that title across multiple studios across Anthem. Another great example, which we have no idea. By the end of this week, it may not be a thing, period. They may cancel the entire Anthem next thing. But that's also because they mistreated those titles. To be fair, Assassin's Creed came out with Unity. It was super buggy. Didn't know where it was going, and not to mention the uh, Anthem had a huge rocky start. It was pretty much an alpha that was released as a game. I mean, most of you do stuff like that, you're, you're going to have failures. Agreed. And most of that comes from studios or developers or publishers that have lots of cash, that have multiple projects going on at the same time, and literally are trying to make something that appeases to the masses to the point to make cash. Like, they looked at Assassin's Creed and went, we should put in multiplayer because people like multiplayer. That'll be fun. No actual testing, wrong, nothing else done. Wrong game. It broke. Wrong game. I dis- I actually disagree. I think Assassin's Creed multiplayer would be incredible, but the way they went about it was broken, and that's the problem, right? Uh, yeah. Anthem's another one. Anthem is like, it, like in, in Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, it's covered by Jason Schreier, where he interviewed people from the development studio. They literally released this, uh, like the teaser trailer of somebody going and flying into the water, and the CEO of EA at the time called the develop the studio head and said you have to put that in the game like that has to be a thing and they're like we hadn't even developed for flying like we didn't think flying would be in this game that was in 2016 so yeah that i think that there's a problem with those specific companies it mostly comes from greed at least as yeah. far as i can tell so if embracer group isn't going to be greedy and they're just going to let these developers make sure as long as they're borderline profitable and i mean borderline as in like you recoup your costs and they're allowing them to go on then sure then then yeah. i'll 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 refer back to my uh my epic comparison too though like epics bought up a lot of these companies but still has yeah. gone with the same principle of do your thing like uh, so like you know i was a big advocate against epics purchase of psionics for rocket league back at the time but Rocket League hasn't changed. It's still a good game. It's it's got a it's got a few differences in between, but still a good game. Like Psionics as a developer hasn't really been touched as a result. John, we got him. 
We can cancel the podcast now. The whole reason why we continued was for you to admit you were wrong. And this one thing just shut her down. Now. It, it, only, it only took 50 something episodes. <laughs> the, um, I don't know. I, I feel like it's not a big deal in the sense of like, you know, Gearbox getting bad. I just, I'm curious to where a lot of these, is this going to be a continued effort too? With all the, I mean, with a lot of acquisitions that have been happening over the past, honestly, a few years. I'm starting to wonder if the consolidation is starting to happen where a lot of developers are going to get bought out. The indie developers may flourish in this new digital world, mm-hmm. I would say. Um, or they're going to be pushed out one or the other if they don't have anything to help them. Because, I mean, they, they can get bullied, to be honest. Um, having a group like Embracer group, being under an umbrella like Embracer group helps give you a little bit more leverage for advertisement mm-hmm. and stuff like that to help the success of games, whereas you don't really get that with indie titles. I love this so much. There's a Wikipedia page that is devoted strictly to the mergers with the Embracer group. Yeah, and it's long. Wow. I mean, they just, yeah. I mean, they've been buying up everything. I'm like, I'll put it in our document for, for today. And uh, it, it, they, they've just been really busy. And I'm like, they're getting into this market really, really hot and heavy. And I'm just wondering where they're going to end up in the end. And I'm just curious where you thought, where you guys thought they were going with it, why they were doing what they were doing. Because I'm like, that's the only thing that makes sense to me is that they want to have enough, enough going on in the pie that whatever money comes in will just feed the beast until, it, until it's not satisfied anymore. I definitely think that that's a majority of it. And I think that they're smart personally because i do believe that if you're trying to compete with activision you're trying to compete with ea ubisoft epic like these companies have fucking cash and they also have cachet that you don't strictly have at this point so what better way to try and compete and earn your bite would be to just go after these smaller studios that are looking for a form of protection that are looking to create the games that they want to create and you just don't care you just want them to make and make profitably like i'm not saying that they're not going to close any of these studios i'm sure they will because it's like any other business over time there's something about the fact that like if you don't produce enough they can't continue to give you money like that unfortunately as much as i truly believe that video games is an art it is a very expensive art and unlike movies where it's i shouldn't say unlike movies because it is entirely possible for one person to make a game we've talked about a lot on this this podcast how one person or a small group makes games all the time it is such a hard battle considering that there is so much out there yeah open up your phone go to whatever it is play store app store and just search games and you will find hundreds of thousands of entries because the barrier to entry is so small anyone can do it garbage where and and no i mean like some of it is good some of it's bad a lot of it's bad. There's no argument. That a lot of it's bad. But like a lot of people put forth the effort and they try to do stuff. And I commend them and appreciate that and love that passion. But if you really want to make and you don't want to have to worry, the easiest way to do that is to find a publisher that coincides with you. Someone who is willing to allow you to just go as long as you don't tank. So if you're <laughs> going to tank anyways, or there's a possibility of tanking anyways, why not partner with someone who is telling you, we just want you to make your stupid game. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My name is Mayo. Millions of dollars. Well, we've talked about that before, about how a lot of these <laughs> games get made because they're trying to do stuff. But yeah, I agree. I, I, I don't. I, I don't think. I don't think this is a bad move. I think Brent, you're right. That like this. This makes sense for a lot of companies. Also, I didn't realize how many companies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I just keep seeing like like this. Uh, this this Wikipedia article only has like some of the actual acquisition costs, you know, and I mean, these acquisition acquisition costs now range from anywhere between three hundred and fifty thousand dollars to one point three billion now. So. It's very <laughs> clear that they want to do something in the gaming industry and, and whether that's just make money off of, you know, giving companies backing. Cool. Yeah, um, I agree. But I'd I'd be interested to see I guess where or how how much more we hear about Embracer Group going forward here because we'll seems find like out they've been kind of really quiet we haven't heard much even coming out after uh, Darksiders Genesis I haven't heard much other than the fact that it's a piece of sh- well, game and you should have done better What's wrong I feel like with you, you just keep referencing Darksiders <laughs> as the only property that Embracer Group makes they make nothing else but Darksiders. 
<laughs> they do make a bunch of other games, but they don't relate to me. And then since like Darksiders was like probably one of the best ones that THQ made that they absorbed from, and yeah. or at least a well known property. Um, but yeah, and you know they've already shown to screw it up. So I agree entirely. Fuck them. Please let us know what your thoughts are on Gearbox being acquisitioned. How do you feel they're going to be treated under the Embracer group? Are you excited about this? Do you think this is terrifying? Are you sad they will ruin your borderlands? Let us know in the comment section floating directly uh, to the left of John, which is what? to the right of John. Nothing there. Because there's a light. There's a lamp. There's a lamp over there. And it's got a purple light. That's on my right. That, that's my left. You're right. Thank you, sir. Right. Do not besmirch me on this podcast ever again. Besmirch. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Thank you. And now I think we're going to. I'm cutting it, Mark, because you didn't fucking answer my question. I got to take a piss like a motherfucker. And I was like, Mark, how do you want to do this? I need to take a break. Um, All right, Mark, how do you want to do this? Um, hmm. One, two, three. I think that's good enough. And uh, now it's time for my topic of the show, the final topic, which is about CD Projekt Red. Dun, 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 dun. Sadly, they were hit with a cyber attack. Uh, turns out the source code for Witcher 3 and for Cyberpunk 2077 has been could, stolen, could, as well as company documents. Could you say they were cyberpunked? Cyberpunked, indeed, my friend. Uh, it was a now, cyber attack. But yeah. A little kidding aside, most kidding aside. Shut up, uh, <laughs> There are concerns for the employees right now that their personal data has been leaked because yeah. they got into uh. the CD Projekt Red server. Now, CD Projekt Red says at this point in time, they have no reason to believe that is the case. The hackers who did get in did leave a note, which I thought was very kind of them, <laughs> uh, where they said they had been epically pwned, which makes me think it was epic, but I'm not going <laughs> to name names. I'm just going to put it out there. Because <laughs> it capitalized epically. <laughs> epic, yeah. It's really dumb. <laughs> but it's like epically and i'm like epic come on if you guys are gonna do this you should leave a signature everyone knows that uh <coughs> excuse me says quote you have been epically pwned we have a dump full copies of your source code for the from your per force server for cyberpunk 2077 witcher 3 gwent an unreleased version of witcher 3 which a lot of people are speculating is the next gen iteration of it. So. We have also dumped all your documents relating to accounting, administration, legal, HR, investor Ugh. relations, and more. The so HR bad. one is definitely the biggest concern right oh. now, right? Well, you legal too, because any 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 partnerships they would have had or any backdoor well, deals true. that no one needed to isn't, know about that will piss say, off all their investors. Isn't isn't their class action lawsuit still pending on them right now? Correct. I think the bigger issue to, in my opinion, is still HR because you have to protect your company. You have to protect oh, your yeah, people yeah. who are working for you. If they have social security numbers or whatever the equivalent is because they're in Poland. So I don't know what their identification numbers are, but whatever mm. that may be, along with other personal information, that's a big concern. You also have contractors. That's a big concern. Um, the other thing, too, is that CD Projekt Red is like part owner, if not full owner of GOG which is good old games, which is a storefront, which means they have consumer facing information. They do believe that that was not, uh, they, well, they said that the game related stuff, like our information shouldn't have been leaked, but that I don't remember. And they have not issued any information on it at this point, as far as I can tell. Well, I remember. Uh, well, okay. Yep. I'm just looking at, I'm literally looking at the information that CD Projekt Red has provided on their Twitter, which is the only way they're communicating about this at the moment. Like they have not even talked to employees as far as I understand it through email, which they probably have. I would yeah. imagine they have, but it's hard to say. Uh, the the uh, ransom note goes on to say, also we've encrypted all your servers, but we understand that you most likely have recover, can recover from backups. If we will not, or uh, if we will not come to an agreement, okay, uh, then your there source was code. Obviously, uh, they were not American because yep, be they sold had or, this directly translated. <laughs> or sold or leaked online, and documents will be sent to contacts in gaming journalism. Your public image will go down the shitter even more, and people will see how shitty your company functions. Investors will lose trust with your company, and stock will dive even lower. You have 48 hours to contact us. So I think it's important to note specifically that I think. One thing we can all agree on is anybody who is, again, not 
like high level here in CD Projekt Red, their data getting leaked. Anybody who works for the company as, you know, a receptionist or a developer, like the lower end people totally feel for them if any of their information gets leaked. This sucks. My wife has been battling with uh, identity theft for over a year and a half now. It's not fun. It sucks. No. It, 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 and it's costly too, because here in the United States, you have to pay money to shut down your credit report from being viewed from other people. Not crazy expensive, but it's $75 a month if you want to shut down all three, which is what is required in order for you to get a hard credit check for anything. So You shouldn't so have to pay money to protect something uh, that people shouldn't be exploiting in the first place. I agree entirely. Yep. It's a huge problem. So really feel for those individuals. I also don't think what these people did is is right. Like they're they're arguably doing not arguably, they're very much doing illegal things, right? Like you shouldn't be trying to access their servers. That's their own proprietary software. All of that is very important to state because I also do think that unfortunately, when you deliver this level of hype and then also don't deliver on it and continue to just piss people off, this is what happens. It reminds me of very, very weird analog, which a lot of people will be upset with me about. But honestly, they attempted coup on the 6th of January here in the United States, right? You had people in our government, including our president at the time, who was like, hey, we should just get rid of them. It's fine. It's no big deal. They got there and then realized, oh, my God, this is not what I want at all. And now they're all in trial. It's not an exact one to one, but it does remind me very similar of like, hey, we're going to hype up this product. This is, you should enjoy it. I don't think we should oh. have gotten there, but that's cool. <laughs> oh what do you mean they shouldn't have gotten there we should have gotten there <laughs> i don't think that that is necessarily a great example um but that that was that was all yeah okay sorry well, then i'll take i take my example back it's no longer an example john go ahead and talk <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's a sore spot right now i'm just like i don't want to it is a sore spot i agree which is why i was trying to tread a little carefully like again this is a very odd odd circumstance i i feel for the the people who work at cd project red yeah yeah holy like same thing happened only... to sega not too long ago they got infiltrated yeah. their stuff got spread all over the internet or was it released or not i don't remember I don't remember anything too crazy coming out, I mean, so I okay. can't say. But like your source code is, mm. a, I mean, uh, Mark, you can speak as a developer. Like one, your source code's never perfect. So anybody who's looking at that and finds even the most insignificant issues with it, it's going to be hurtful. Well, the other thing too is, so like investors are not going to care about what your source code looks like. No, they don't care. They, they care no. that it works. That's it. Yeah. Most of them yeah, probably investors, don't even know what source code is. No, in this instance, it would be mostly what John was talking about, whereas if they're stealing the investor files here and they're actually leading to like actual deals that are happening that have not been announced yet. Oh, yeah. That's what they'll be pissed off about. Yeah. That's oh, what I mean, if, about. if they've got access to their communications, like internal chat stuff, like if it's through Slack or through like hip chat or something like that, that's, you know, like a, a, a platform they use for communication that they get that they found access to. Oh, yeah, shit. that's maybe a, that, how about. Uh, any and all sexual harassment lawsuits that got settled mm -hmm. after the fact that they were trying to keep hush hush in order to stave off <clears throat> you know bad uh bad publicity for the investors and that money just basically got blown out of the water and is just being released anyway wow we have a dude that literally had 13 settlements in a year what are you doing <laughs> yeah i mean i i think that you know cd project red's I guess placement or 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 idea of you know we do not negotiate with terrorists you know is is admirable but it's not the right move. I don't know I if it is or not because there's no guarantee that these guys will do any of the sort. I mean, most I mean, people say my, don't pay anything anyway because they're not. But, gonna but the, I mean, the thing is that it. journalists will pay for this if they really wanted to, like like to get unreleased information about some unreleased version or, or get information about some unreleased version of Witcher Three. Um, you know, to to get information about the inner workings of a company, for example, or darker parts of the internet, for example, that would want personal information. Oh yeah, those these people employees. are screwed. Uh, those like, people, like th they're going to be put onto a list, and it's going to be dropped on the dark web, and it's going to be sold off. I, I, I mean, find this. 
it, it's going to get but, sold off one way or the other. The question is, is CG, CD Projekt Red actually going to pay for it, which they've actually publicly said that they're not going to, nope. you know, or is this other organization just going to say for a group of actors, whatever it is, going to just go to go somewhere else and say, OK, that's fine. We'll we'll sell it off somewhere else and you'll have to deal with the ramifications on the other side of this. I have to wonder because there's been a lot of people that have I mean, I'm, this is obviously all speculation, but like, you know, people at CD Projekt Red talking about crunch, you know, bad work environments all this other stuff. And we see how they've talked about their employees and, you know, Oh, there's been no crunch to the investors while looking at them going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And it's like, it's just a bunch of crap. And so maybe there was someone on the inside that was mad enough to do this, that would have access to these things. I don't know. Um, that is, I feel like that's possible. I feel like someone who is that mad though, would do more of the like, Hey, I'm going to go and, like speak to a journalist about the working conditions rather than leaking information about their fellow employees. Right? Well, not you if they're like, trying to hurt them oh, where they yeah. think it matters the most, which is their pocket. And they but don't necessarily wanna... have to do anything with the HR files. They don't have to hurt those other people. They just are using it to threaten them. I don't know. I feel like there's, there's easier routes than faking a hack. If that makes sense. I wouldn't say faking. They really did it. <laughs> well, well, but I mean, like if you're an employee there, you have access to a lot of that stuff. You have the potential to hack as well, but I don't know. It seems, it seems like there's easier routes to get to the direction that they, that you're alluding they would want than this. Again, it was all just bullshit. I, there's no evidence to support this at all. It's just one of those things where it's like, you really, you got in deep, you got everything. Yep. Yeah. Well, to Mark, to your point, I think the smarter choice for CD Projekt Red at this point in time is literally just be like, all right, cool. Minus the HR stuff, obviously, and minus anything they can't publicly say due to investor contracts, I'd release all the information. I mean, put out the th Witcher 3 is already sold through the roof. You're you're getting sales, sure, and you will continue to get sales. But what's yeah, the harm in putting the, the, I the mean, code out there? Like, who cares? I, I mean, you could straight up you could straight up just like ruin their their selling power, you know, in that respect. But personal information about employees or legal information about the company, um, inter in, in, you know, uh, intra-company communications, like that stuff is still a thousand times more valuable than looking at the source code of, of, of course. the game of itself, course, you, you know. You also can't guarantee that those people are going to give it to you when you give them the money. That's what I was no, saying earlier. I but, was like, yeah, you can pay them if you want, but... But, but here's, here, this is the problem with modern encryption. And it's just... You, you you get locked into this and this is where like the fbi's recommendation for example is is just pay them just pay them like that's your best shot like because encryption is good enough that you know if as long as they're using some form of modern encryption which fun fact any computer can do now or better yet your own servers can encrypt themselves you know like there's nothing you can do about it so yeah. just pay them Unfortunately, it just, the last part of this letter just to me says the investors will lose trust in your company. Your stock will go even lower. I mean, that's that's like, OK, that's the real punch. That's what I want you to know. That's what I want you to remember. Yeah, it feels very personal in that regard. Yeah. And, you know, you know, the gaming journalism threat leaked online documents, source codes, all this other stuff like that last line investors will lose trust in your company and your stock will lower. You have 48 hours. And it's like, it just seems like, you know, fuck you. Yeah, I agree. So. I agree. I think it's, uh, again, as a, if you're an employee there, you should a hundred percent cover yourself up. If you shop on GOG or you have a, I don't know if the Witcher or uh, Cyberpunk require like an online service you have to sign up for. Some, a lot of modern games do. I recommend as a consumer that you protect yourself, change the password, do whatever yep. you can in those services. I know they said, and they've said this publicly multiple times, that information is not leaked. Do not take that as word, right? Like companies lie all the time. They lie about the actual damage that is done by a hack consistently, yep. mostly because they're not quite sure how much damage has happened. We're literally at the less than 24 hour mark right now while discussing it on Tuesday before <sighs> this episode comes out. I'll You'll know by more the time, by week, the, and even say, more than that in a month. <laughs> yeah. say, by the time that, by the time you guys see this, you, we, you could know everything about, what CD yep. Project Red has, or we could just see that it's, you know, just smoke in the wind. It, 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 you know, whatever. But this uh, leads we'll, to we'll another bigger out. problem, too. We're having a lot of companies having issues keeping their information locked up. I mean, 
why is all this information HR information in general should be stored somewhere completely separate? I don't know why they're having this issue where they get everything that needs to so, stop. How are they it, keep getting a hold of everything that deals with their business, their investors? Like, well, why? So the, the, here's here's a here's a little I guess uh, lesson I guess I've learned from from internet security or from from business security I guess uh, whenever it comes to applications and and web or server based things. Uh, the idea is that you maintain everything inside a secure domain, and then you like one secure network basically or domain of of servers and connections together for the entire company and the reason and, and then you control the access of each person to each place inside that network that's how most of the like uh around charlotte here for example that's how most of the big banks work um but the idea is that there's very few entry points into that network from the outside the idea is that if you can control where those entry points are into the network as a whole then you don't have to worry about, OK, is this network secure and this network secure? Well, they've got different you know requirements and sometimes they need to talk to each other. So is that secure, too? But, you know, like it's better to just put everything under one house, control one entryway, you know, for like your website or um, the VPN with remote connections, you know, so people can connect their laptops to work. It's a vault or, door. But Something as soon as like someone that. comes by with enough explosive or but, enough torches, that vault but, door is not going to work. But that's the realistic, you know, issue is, you know, for, so, for example, if the HR system is a, it's its own system entirely, completely separated. Well, who's to guarantee that the security of that is just as secure as the application side of things or the development side of things? Well, you know, it also but, depends on what people want. Do people want the HR information or do they really want everything else? And is it even worth it? And it, to be honest, but, but the other thing, too, is security principles for the two networks are probably going to be the same regardless. Yeah. And yeah, I guess that's fair. I, I mean, like they're, they're going to look the same. The difference is whether you know how to access both. I of mean, them at to the same me, time, it almost you know? comes up with the same thing. Like if I was to have a hundred million dollars in gold. Why would I store it in one location? Why, if someone was going to try to steal it and I spread it out all over the place and only I knew about it, yeah, they might stumble plus one, but they're only going to get a small portion of it. Yeah, but the problem is that the internet basically means that they can find and dig all 50 of those locations at the same time. Well, that's what I was going to say is I think the difference is that if you're talking about a vault door, you can only hit one at a time, whereas realistically they could hit them all at the same time. So even right. though you've spent X amount of dollars extra to ensure that each one is on a different server you're still having the possibility that's all happening at the same time regardless mm -hmm. i do agree with your principle i think that's actually not a bad idea I, it's something that i haven't really thought about a whole lot mostly because the companies i've worked for i just don't see them going after that information going no i want this too it would be like if they got a hold of everything else they'd leave it alone but your impact would be so much more minimal it depends at least on how much in the you eyes spread of it apart. the public at least and yeah, your employees it depends on how much you spread it apart, right? Like in this instance, we're talking about investor, HR, game code. So yeah. if those are in three separate locations, game code means the least, which means they're probably going after these other two the most. So they're still equally viable targets. And if they hit at least just one of them, it's still bad, right? Well, yeah, I would say so. But at the same time, they're, uh, I guess it depends on how they come across the information in general, how they knew where it was and yeah. everything else. Yeah. That's but, the other uh, thing too is not uh, going after going after now, the investor stuff or the game stuff would seem to be the most valuable because that's what's making them money as a company and uh the hr stuff is kind of like okay yeah that's information they can get back they could they probably have it backed up whatever but i could sell it but is it worth me going through that trouble maybe the hr stuff is probably the hr investor is the most tantalizing because like mark said like source code is source code it's code right like recently last week i think is what it was um wb put a patent on the nemesis system mm -hmm. for uh the the shadow of, of war shadow of mordor games and They're a lot of people came out man i fucking hope they do god that'd be amazing <laughs> but a lot of people came out and pointed out like hey like all of these things that they patented are actually just like very generic if you tweak a system in one way you can do this they're literally probably doing this because it makes it easy for them to one sell it because it's a patented system so they can go hey all of our games are using x system 
And two, it allows them to possibly fight in court if they have to, maybe. And that's a very important because once again, when you're talking about code, like one line difference is all that really matters in that regard. Like one line can change it all or it can't depending on how the system works. So the source code overall, I do think is like the least valuable. Yep. Yes, of course, that means people can get in and fucking mod 2077 and Witcher, however the hell they want. But people do that anyways. PC gaming has allowed that for That's decades. It. That's why they did it. They took away the ability for them to fuck Keanu Reeves. They wanted that back. I, yeah, there you go. See, yeah. they want to fuck Keanu <laughs> Reeves. Mystery solved. You let the people fuck Keanu Reeves when they want to fuck Keanu Reeves. That's right. You guys messed I'm up. S- so just let it go. But, you know, overall, the hope right now, I think we can all agree, is that no one is truly impacted. The company themselves, they have to figure that out as an entity, but the employees, hopefully they're not impacted by this. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of interested to see what comes out from this. I agree. Like, what dirty little secrets do you have? That's the, that's like the soap opera part of me. It's very small, but it's there. I think there's enough there that I agree in the sense of like, you know, CD Projekt Red specifically has dot, done a lot this past three months that I would argue has not been very good for their consumers nor their employees. Yeah. So I definitely feel that level of vindication where I'm like, yeah, but at the same time, it is like, all right, we need to calm down. Let's take a look at the whole picture here because it's not just them that's impacted. Like, right. it's one thing if you're just impacting the CEO and all these people who made dick tons of money off of forcing this game out. It's another thing entirely if you're screwing over, again, the receptionists, the, the you know, the entry level. If it wasn't for that, it would be like one of those moments stuff. where you're looking at your kid after he kicked somebody in the balls and you're like, no, don't do that. Good job. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> It'd be a Robin Hood moment, right? Like, you're like, yeah. Fight for the people, but this is so much it's it's more not, complicated than that. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately. So please let us know what your thoughts are on the CD Project Red hack. Are you concerned? Are you a consumer of their products? Do you think that you should be worried? Are you generally worried for the employees or do you not care at all? Let us know in the comment section floating directly below my wine glass. But above my wine glass, like somewhere in between. You got to figure it out. Poor Mark. But now I think it's time for last call. Last Last call. Call. I like to do that because it fucks Mark up. We don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Of course, we are in our own quarantine bunkers and we are enjoying our own special guests. I, for one, have swapped to wine thanks to the dispatcher himself because he was drinking wine. I'm drinking a Mayomi Pinot Noir. So it's really hard to read because of the lights. Uh, this is actually a fairly inexpensive bottle of wine. It's about $20 or less. It's found often actually at Costco. That's where my wife and I get it. And it's one of the few Pinot Noirs that I enjoy thoroughly because it's got a very full body, nice fruity flavor, but not super dry because I don't really like crazy dry wines. Um, for red wine, I enjoy it quite a bit. And it's got a screw top which I think is important because most wine should move from cork. I know cork is really nice, but cork is going extinct because there's too much cork in wine. So we have to get away from it. Yeah. You got to save it for all of my whiskey. There you go. That's <laughs> fake cork. It's probably fake cork shit actually. Wine. Don't be, don't be the main. It, don't Mark, don't be like that. Why, why you gotta be, why you gotta be like that, John? You like wine. Why you gotta be so rude? Food. Don't you know? I know Kung Fu. Mark, what you drinking? I'm I'm drinking a Pinot Gris, actually. Um, I'm drinking a it's Chateau St. Michel. Ooh, I had Ooh, Chateau uh, St. Michel. It's pretty good. I could say something fancy, too. Pepto de Bismol. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm drink that. No, no, it's not funny. Don't laugh at him. Don't the laugh pep, at him. You only encourage the him. Pepto of Bismol. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did wake up with horrible heartburn the other day, so I thought about it. But there I'm drinking go. my Jameson again. Oh, good old black, black label. Huh, Misty. Now I, see, I, now I see why you needed the Pepto Bismol. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I was actually, drinking Slain. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I need more Pepto Bismol for wine than I do whiskey. That's just me personally. I'm just kidding. Slain's good. It wasn't because of Slain. It was because I ate pizza at 12 o'clock at night and then was like, let's go bad. Oh. Yeah, don't do that. That's yeah. a bad idea. <laughs> That's a no no. Uh, yeah, it is when you're 30. <laughs> We have our Discord you can join. You are more than welcome to join us there. We are trying to do some more live events and game nights. I believe we have a game night coming up here soon. So Oop. please hop in. We try to pick something Two. that is free or are available via some sort of service, right? So PS Plus, PCs, typically where we end up. But Ooh. go ahead, Mark. Next uh, game night will be the weekend of the 20th. There you go. So not this weekend, which is when you're watching the episode, not tomorrow, but the weekend after. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Of course, we do have our weekly deals. There's a Humble Tabletop Together Bundle. I actually love this a lot. This is the second digital tabletop bundle they've done during the pandemic, which I thoroughly enjoy. It includes uh, such titular games as Pandemic, which is a huge game, uh, multiple variations of it, Small World, Love Letter, and Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride is the one that looks the most exciting to me. If you pay a dollar, you get five different games. If you pay $9.72, which is the average price, you get an additional nine games. Some of these are expansions. I'm just not going to go through them all because not everyone knows what all these board games are. So it was I, I say I didn't pay. I didn't know they had a uh, wait. Is this for digital versions of these? Yes, absolutely. I did not know that there was a digital version of Ticket to Ride. That's awesome. There you go. And then for $10 or more. So literally 28 cents more than the average, you get an additional five more games. So please just spend $10. It's going to charity. You're going to charity water, which uh, helps support. Uh, oh, my God. Of course not. The nonprofit organization with a mission to help bring clean water and safe water to developing countries. What a great organization. Yeah. So if not, once again, you can choose your own organization. Just make sure you choose one when you purchase and divvy up the money however you want. That's my favorite thing about Humble. You can do it however you feel. So I actually am going to leave that up because I'm going to push that on our Discord there, John. Yeah. Um, we also have some cool ass sh this week. Actually, I'm sorry. I skipped over the weekly reading. Which is important because it's why Google shouldn't give up on Stadia now that it's being good. It's a great article in Gizmodo. You should read it. But back to the cool AS. Why are we wasting our breath? I love that I have 25 I, curse words this episode. I, appreciate I love that. it. Here for you, buddy. Cool shit. Uh, Eve Online breaks its own Guinness World Record for costliest video game battle. If you remember, because you've watched the show for a long time, viewer, uh, we or listener, we actually talked about the first time this happened in a different section. It was not cool as because it wasn't available at the time. But now we're back around and how they broke it again. EVE Online is easily one of the most interesting online communities because of how much money people put into their property and how much they just throw it away for everything. Uh, also, you can find we found out this week that Horizon Zero Dawn can run at 72p. And it's amazing. It's, it is no, absolutely incredible. Whoa, 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 whoa. So much. I'm that's, not joking. This is that's real. not a mistype. No, this is real. Yeah. It's 72p. Check it out. It's a wonderful GIF. Uh, and finally, the devs behind Glover 64 have released the ROM of the original game in an effort for game preservation. So they basically said, we don't legally have the ability for this. So we can't release the official ROM. So here's an early build ROM. And that's now out on the internet. And I love that so much. Yes, Mark. Ain't it cool? Um, I was looking at, no. It's so good. I actually want to play the game that way. Kind it's of, a, it's a, a very, bit. it's a very interesting art style. I will give it that. Yeah, here you go. There you go. Uh, and finally, our question for the week is, what failed thing do you wish succeeded? I don't fail, so this question's not for me. Not your failed thing, but a failed thing you have enjoyed or wanted to enjoy that you wish succeeded. Oh, well, that's fair. Dreamcast. Okay. That's a I good wish one. that I, I had a lot of potential. It was a good console. Um, it had an online store. Like There was a lot of potential for it to go forward, and it just was squandered, unfortunately. I agree. I agree. Uh, and Vita, Saturn. Vita, God, Vita. No, no, you don't admit it failed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it didn't fail, John. Oh, that's right. It's a failed thing. I'm sorry. I thought it was, I saw succeed and I was just. Sorry. There you go. There you go. Much better. Much better. Uh, for me, it honestly was the Sony Xperia phone. So for, for you youngins who don't remember, I don't have my PSP go around me. It was the slide phone. So it was a, a touchscreen phone. You could call on that. But whenever you wanted to play a game, you would slide the phone up and it had a D-pad buttons and then these touchpad things which were awful they should have gotten rid of the touchpad right. things put joysticks yeah. in there but i <laughs> always thought the concept of having an embed controller in my phone was incredible and i would love that as someone who loves to play games the number one reason i'll play phone in my games one of my games games on my phone <laughs> is the lack of controller yeah a thousand per, like the the recently i've started streaming games to this uh as a hardware platform and that's only because i have and i've shown it on the show before my dualshock 4 that has a clip that allows me to hold the phone there mm -hmm. so i can use a controller i just don't play games even games that are meant to be played on it with the exception of pokemon go 
Like that is the only game I play on my phone, but I have downloaded countless games. I've tried the Super Mario Run. I've tried the Mario Kart. I have on here right now, I've got Final Fantasy, um, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. I've got the knockoff version of that. I've got Catan Universe. I've got all these games and I just don't play them. They sit on my phone forever until eventually I'm like, you're taking up memory, go. Yep. And it's because I just don't like the touchscreen interface. And I know that's me being kind of a curmudgeon old person. Like my brother, Alex, who is 17 years, my younger loves, loves the phone can handle touchscreen, all that. But I just, if I'm going to play a game, I want the tactile feel to it yep. and the buzzing and the rumbling, the vibration isn't enough for me to get over the fact that I'm just swiping on a screen. Like I want more than that. And so for me, the Xperia phone was the beginning of something that could have been beautiful and it just faded away into obscurity. Brent, Brent wants that intimacy with his phone games, you know, you better believe it, man. I want to, I want to feel the, the, the humps and the curves and the vibrations Ooh. and the, the rumbles. Yeah. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta take a cold shower. <laughs> Need a cigarette. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, God. <laughs> no um I, mine's pretty simple uh anthem yeah yeah that's a good one i, was I wanted it too my friend looking I, I was so looking forward to the game like when all of the announcements came out all of the trailers released i was on top of it i was ready to get a um i was ready to get an ea subscription for it Mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah i mean it was gonna be iron man on steroids like like for me i had already bought battlefield so that would have been the only other game that would have made sense for me to get a subscription i was so looking forward to anthem that i was ready to buy a subscription with them to be able to play it and it flopped and i even told you guys after release i was like i'm gonna give it two weeks i'm gonna gonna let it simmer for a second you know to see how it goes you know to see if it's really worth it and it wasn't um but i enjoyed or i liked the idea of the suits of armor and the ability to choose you know what suit of armor you went with um and i think i'd even made this relationship back in the moment uh um zoids one of my favorite yeah. shows growing up um i always liked that that thought of like the liger zero having different outfits or different you know based on the the different types of uh you know like situations it was in so i thought of the suits in the same kind of sense anyway i thought it was a really cool idea and it flopped liger suits just the best come on liger zoid now i want to (laughs) rewatch i gotta watch porco rosso tonight though uh Mm. uh so good no, but I agree with you. Like, I, I was actually thinking about Anthem a lot recently, especially because we've talked about, you know, EA and where it's going to end up with the project at the end of this month or the end of this week, actually. Uh, I, I am deeply saddened by that game. It sits on my shelf back there. Still wish to this day that I could confidently put it in as a game I would want to play. And to this day, there's still like every time I look at it, I'm like, mm, you know what? I, I have a better use of my time. <laughs> okay. Unfortunate. Okay. Yeah, that's that's not good. No. Please let us know what thing failed that you wish succeeded. You can let us know in the comment section floating directly in front of the base of Mark's wine glass, but it went down and sorry, the comment section is gone. And until next time, cheers. 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 Well, the comment section's back. Ta-da! <laughs>